Hello and welcome to another Spark AR tutorial video. In this video, we'll be looking at a version 88 new feature, uh, which is the ability to now be able to pick images from the user's devices gallery. Uh, please bear in mind this effect um, currently um, only works on Instagram. So you would always need to make sure that you change your project to only be an Instagram project. And I'm going to show you how I created this very simple effect here, where when I tap on the screen, this hole will appear. And under that hole will be on our device where we can select our image or video clip. And we'll go through some of the nuances of that as we break this down. So I'm just going to start off by creating a new project, like so. And I'm just going to turn the webcam off on that project there and expand this project up. Okay, so first thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to go to Project, Edit Properties, and make sure that we only have the Instagram enabled so it will not work on Facebook, and hit Done. With that done, when we go to Assets, you'll now notice that when we go to Add Asset, we have this new option under version 88 called Gallery Texture. If I select that, and what this is, this is basically um, when the user opens this your effect upon their device, at the very bottom, I'll be given this option called um, Add Image or Add File. And I'll click on that, and that will basically load the image from their gallery that they select. They can only select one image or one um, clip uh, at a time. So you can't have multiple gallery textures in your effect. You can only have one um, that will be detected within your project. So please bear that in mind. With this gay texture selected, you can also add a pending texture. So if I enable that, and I was to, let's say, just choose a color for now, uh, I could select a texture that would be there when um, the user hasn't selected a, a image on their device yet. Or we can just give it a color that will show up uh, until the user has defined, again, their own image to be put there. So what we did for this effect here, uh, this sort of jigsaw effect where when we click on the face, the uh, user's face breaks open, revealing a mesh underneath which has this texture on, uh, which could be any image underneath. And, and again, as you saw at the beginning of the video, you'd have seen a preview of that in action uh, on my device. Cause I can't really emulate it within the Spark AR Studio. So again, you won't be able to preview whether this works or not until you actually deploy this onto your phone by sending it to your device. Uh, but basically, we need to create a animation. So what I did is in After Effects, I just let's open this up. I took the face tracker texture, and I built a composition to the same dimensions as that. I then chose where I want my breakage to be. So in this case, I wanted my break to be in the middle. So I created a white solid. I added a shatter effect to it and I made sure I changed the pattern to be a puzzle piece and I just changed the depth to be a negative so the puzzle pieces fall into the face because when I try and make them fall out because they are bound by this shape here they actually wouldn't fall correctly. So the reason I went with white is white is a good um, so, uh, replacement when we get to alphas. So I basically created that and I added another white. I turned off my face tracker texture I then went to file, export, add to render queue and I just exported this as a PNG sequence and I made sure that my composition, uh, just quickly again to highlight, I've covered this in other videos, I tried to make sure that my composition is a fairly low frame rate and a very short duration, otherwise my effect will start to uh, chug along, so much to speak. Once I did that, I just went into Spark, Add, Animation Sequence, choose File, Navigate, to my folder. So I'm just going to sort this out by date. Like so. And in here I'll create this uh, folder called Jigsaw Head. And there is 36 frames for this animation. So you can see each of these are a still image as it breaks apart. I hit open and this will import this into our animation sequence. I Because I made sure I had them as RGB plus alpha and as a PNG sequence, it's kept the transparency. That is important for this effect to work um, that I'm trying to replicate here. Okay, so now that it's done, I just went to add object and I just chose to add a face mesh. 
And again, my computer fans are starting to round up again. And click insert. I create a new material. There we go, just move that across. Uh, went to my face tracker, selected texture extraction, went to my material, changed the texture to be my face tracker texture, made sure the shadow type was flat, and I changed the alpha to be my animation sequence. So at the moment, uh, you can't, you won't really be able to see, but you can see down here in the preview that we have this sort of looping animation going on. All I did then is I also created another face mesh, put this face mesh below uh, or above my uh, previous one, so it's actually below it in the hierarchy. Do remember again in the previous video we talk about how the uh, hierarchy is inverted. I'm just going to call this one my reveal. I created another new material. On this new material, I choose the texture to be my gallery texture. And as you notice, it's now gone black. Uh, change it to be flat. So now when we uh, launch this upon our phone, the user will be on the net, we'll be given a little UI element down here to be able to select their image or video, and it will now fill that space. Now, a few things to note that the gallery texture does fill the space of the object that you're applying the material to. So if you're applying it to a plane, uh, Obviously, um, it will fill the square that plane, so we'll start to distort it. Uh, we'll look again to try and see if we can figure out a way of uh, removing the distortion, depending on what size or scale the user's device is. At the moment, this is only just dropped, so we haven't quite uh, had enough time to play about with that at the moment. Um, but you can also apply this uh, gallery texture to your particles. Anything that you can apply a material to, this gallery texture could also be applied to. So again, think quite creatively with that. All I did then was I just opened up my patch editor. I chose my face mesh, went to interactions, patch, create, object tap. When this is tapped, I wanted it to play my animation. So I actually added a switch and that switch went to a pulse. So, and then that went to an animation. So when this was turned on, it played. When this was turned off, it reversed. Drag this to a frame transition. Made sure that my frames is one higher than the number of frames, so about 37, I think, for this. And then I went to my animation sequence, selected current frame, and just hooked this all up like so. So now, when I preview on my device, I'm going to go to simulate touch. It'll now break apart. And in fact, it's meant to be 36. There we go. And when I tap it, it will reverse it. So I have this animation where I break it open and close it up like so. Uh, what I'd love to be able to do, and what I'm going to actually do when I work on this with a bit more time, is I'm actually going to build a kind of robot where you can sort of smash the eye, and when you click it once, it cracks, click it again, it breaks even more, and so on and so on. Uh, but for now, this is just a kind of very quick introduction, seeing as it has literally just landed at the time of me making this video. Um, again, just to quickly show you in principle that you can apply this to anything, I'm just going to quickly apply a particle system into my effect, move this to the bottom, and give that the same material as I have assigned to this face tracker here. And we're going to run this onto my device, and we'll be able to see what it looks like running on my phone. So this does take a bit of time sometimes to transmit. And uh, I'm just going to open up my screen recorder. So bear with whilst I uh, open that up. Okay. So once we've got it deployed to our phone, I'll just press continue. We have this add media button at the bottom. At the moment, you can see my particles are black because we haven't applied any media assets to it. If I click on my face, it'll break apart, but there'll be nothing there. But I go to add media. This will open up my phone's library of images, so I'm just going to select a picture of Oryx for the sake of this. Actually, no, it's fine to a bit uh, more interesting. Maybe some flowers. So you can see the flowers are now been applied to that material. But also, if we was to record and look at my phone, you'll notice that the particles have also got those flower uh, texture applied to it. 
Uh, we can also apply alphas to this uh, texture. So this uh, material that we created, we can also still apply alphas to it to actually cut it out even more. So with this gallery texture here, I could apply an alpha. So I can make my, um, for example, if I was to just quickly add a plane, and then on that plane, select the material, which is material one, select material one, and I'm just going to choose an alpha, and I'm just going to use the default face uh, mesh mask texture and just move this plane up a little bit. And as you notice, it, it basically will conform to the uh, alpha mask that we put onto it. It will still keep to the proportions of the shape, but the alpha mask, we can actually make things disappear or appear as we want to. And again, we can also control the alpha mesh and make it animated, as you've seen in, again, another previous video when we looked at making a twirling um, SDF style uh, mask animation, for example. So again, we can combine things together to start to generate something quite creative. Uh, like I said, this only works on Instagram. Uh, it's still quite early days. We haven't seen a huge amount with this yet. Uh, a lot of people effects are already at that moment include things like replacing backgrounds, chroma keying, etc. Um, but I can see it being used in games for sort of setting the player's uh, identity and then giving that player's identity a kind of name with dynamic text, potentially. So you can kind of start to build up as we go along. Anyway, this is just a sort of very quick, um, I say quick, kind of look at version 88 of Spark. There are a few other little additions, such as the ability to now um, add interactions and taps to blocks. Um, but I'm not going to cover that because, again, um, it's kind of self-explanatory and an evolution of what was there before. So I've been Stephen Fisher, and remember to like, comment and subscribe, and I will see you again soon. Goodbye.